This phone has really surprised me, and if you're in the market for a really low cost phone, but still want something that really performs well, this might be your option. Let's go over those reasons. What's up techies, this is the Moto G 4th generation, and as I said at the beginning of the video, it is a very surprising phone. I got this on Amazon, and this is the Amazon edition for only 150 bucks, and it's such a good deal, I couldn't pass it up, I wanted to try it out. Let's take a look around the device, and then we'll kind of get into some of the specifications and how it treated me and my experience with this phone. So as far as the build quality goes, you know, you get that soft matte back, you've got this plastic bumper on the outside shell. It does look like a metal frame, but it is still plastic. Regardless, it still looks nice. On the back is a 13 megapixel camera. It shoots 1080p and it actually looks pretty decent. I'll get into the camera in just a little bit because I do want to focus on that a little bit more. You also get a microphone on the back along with your LED flash. Up at the top, you got your headphone jack. On the bottom, you have a micro USB port. This is a fingernail indention so you can get to the back of the device. And this is where you access your SD card and then your SIM card tray. So the SIM card tray comes in like that. You actually have an adapter, so you can use your nano SIM card. As I mentioned, you got your micro SD card and it supports the 128 gigs. So it's really cool that it's got expandable storage on top of the 16 gigs that comes internally. To replace the back, all you do is just snap it back on. So it doesn't come with a removable battery, but it's got 3000 milliamp hour battery installed on this sucker. So it's got like a stock Android experience, I'll get into that in just a second as well. Because there's not much software installed, you're gonna get really good battery life out of this. Now mind, I do have a tempered glass screen protector on this device, I always put those on there if I can. I'll leave a link down below of the one I'm using, it's been a pretty good one. But on the front, you're gonna see your speaker grill, it's got a front facing speaker, just a single speaker. Then you have this little sensor that's placed in that area, along with a five megapixel camera for the front shooter. Then you got your microphone down here at the bottom. Motorola has their power and the volume rocker on the same side, which I like that. The power button has grooves that we can kind of differentiate. If you're not looking at the phone, you can tell which is the power button and which is the volume rocker. And the buttons feel really nice and tactile. They got a nice touch to them. Now that we have the phone booted all up, you're gonna notice that the lock screen looks a little different from what you've seen before. That's because this is the Amazon edition. The Amazon edition, you get 50 bucks off the phone if you're allowing ads. If you spend another 50 bucks, you would get the Moto G that doesn't have the ads. The ads, in my opinion, are not intrusive. I don't care about the lock screen or what it looks like. I care about what I get on the inside of the phone. That's what's on the inside that counts, guys. If you can get over the ads on the lock screen, it's well worth saving the 50 bucks and just getting this one instead of the actual regular one or whatever you want to call it, the non-Amazon edition. To get out of the lock screen, all you gotta do is just swipe up or you can set up a pin or password, all that kind of stuff. By the way, I've been like decorating all my phones and stuff like that with Suicide Squad because I was so excited to see that movie. This is one of my favorite wallpapers I got. Don't ask me where I got it. I just found it in a Google Plus wallpaper community. So beyond this, I actually have Nova Launcher installed. I do that with every phone that I get. That's just how I like to use the phone. I like the app drawer better with Nova Launcher along with being able to do this tray down here and being able to add like folders and all that kind of stuff. Plus I like to add custom icons and this is the fix icon pack in case you're wondering. So this is gonna look like stock Android. It's pretty much is stock Android with the few little Motorola kind of tricks up their sleeves. Other than that, it's basically a vanilla Android experience, which is great. Just to show you what version of Android we're currently running. We're just going down to settings and about phone and we're running Android 6.0.1, which is pretty much the latest that you can get. And as you can see, I turn my Wi-Fi on, you can see all my notifications start to come through. But that's what your notifications look like if uh, you're interested. And one thing I do like is you got the clear all right there, which is awesome. I love clear all. That even goes with your recent apps. You just swipe up and you got the little indication down here that you can do. Other settings on the phone that you might be interested in is that, you know, you got your basic setup. You got home display, sound notification app, storage. The biggest difference that you're gonna see like in the settings app is that you're gonna see an Amazon tab. And that's because this is an Amazon phone. And again, go back to that, being that this is an Amazon phone, we do get notifications pushed through. You only get this like little small ad right here, which is really cool. It's not intrusive. And you just swipe it away if you don't care about it and just go about your business. And just to kind of go over a few more software things and just like some of the UI, as I mentioned that this has Android Marshmallow, it's got a stock Android experience. It's got the stock dialer. You can use Google Messenger. That's what I like to use. You get Hangouts, all that kind of stuff. So let's go into the camera, talk about that a little bit. So the camera pulls up and you got basically a stock Android experience, but with some added options. This is basically the Google camera and there's not much else to it. I mean, you got some options up here for your HDR, flash, timer. 
You can turn the camera around to your front facing camera. If you want to look at previous pictures that you have taken from the camera app, you just swipe over. And a uh, big shout out to Mike here. He took a really bad road rash burn while we were longboarding. And then you can share different stuff like that. You know, really cool stuff. It's really easy to use. You do have touch to focus options. You can adjust the darkness and also the brightness by just sliding along here. You know, it'll lock it in place or you can just tap where you want to focus at. You want to swipe over from the left hand side to get into some more options. You got shutter sound. I always turn that off if I can. I got a memory card so you can tell it to go to your memory card or your internal storage. Quick capture, really cool. I'll show you that in a second. You can save your location. I always have that off. I don't like having that on there. You can choose your resolution sizes, shutter type button, tap anywhere or shutter button. I like the shutter button. If you want to do tap anywhere, I'll show you what that does. Basically, you just tap anywhere on the screen and it takes the photo. So you can just kind of tap over there or you can move the shutter around. I'm not a big fan of that option. I like the shutter button better just so I have a little bit more control that way. Our video size goes with the 1080p, 30 frames per second. Slow motion on the rear shooter, you got 5 QHD, 540p with 120 frames per second. So if you wanna see the options for the front facing camera, we'll go through that real quick. Again, some of the same kind of options that you get from before. You get your ratios, five megapixels, or if you wanna go a little bit wider, you can get 3.8 megapixels. Shutter type again, selfie mirror, selfie photo mirror, which is, you know, if you wanna check yourself out in the mirror. You got your video size, which is full HD, 1080p, 30 frames per second. And again, you got basically the same settings. So just to kind of give you an example of like, if you want to take a picture and how quick it takes the picture, if you're not really trying to get the best one posed up, it focuses pretty fast You can just snap the picture. Or if you want to get a little bit more detailed, like some of those macro type shots, you touch the focus where you want to focus and snap the picture. Pretty cool stuff. Now. Another nice quick setting that I really like is that you can twist the phone and it launches the camera. And you can even do that from the lock screen. So it's a really neat feature, I like that a lot. It, actually, it's just a feature that I really want out of all phones. Another gesture feature that you can do is called Chop, which turns on your LED light. Just be careful not to throw your phone. Like I can just see someone trying to do the chop too much or too fast and it just flies out of your hand. So be careful when you do that. That pretty much wraps up most of the features and what you're gonna get with this phone. My experience from it is that I got it to last all day long and that's with heavy uses, just like any other flagship phone that I would use, it lasted me all day. It's got a 3000 mAh hour battery, which is a really big size for such a budget phone. So I got no complaints about battery life. It performs fast, it's quick. I was actually able to use some Wi-Fi tethering options and it worked just great. I use this on the Verizon network and it's open to all networks, which is another phenomenal feature that I really love about Motorola is that you can take this phone anywhere with you. You can put it on any carrier. My biggest gripe about this is that it does not have NFC, so you can't use Android Pay. If you use Android Pay a lot, you're gonna miss out on that feature, but if you don't use Android Pay or NFC features, you're not really gonna miss out on anything at all. This phone is a great starter phone, it's a great backup phone, heck, it's just a great daily driver phone if you're not too picky about carrying the latest flagship device out there. Another great thing about this phone is that it comes with a turbo charger. That's awesome, it's got quick charging, it's gonna get this thing juiced up in no time. But man, I'm telling you, this is a great buy. I really think that you should check it out, especially if you're in a market for only spending about 150 bucks on a phone. I'll leave all the links that you need down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please do so so you can see more videos like this. And until then, stay techy.